7.4.product in R3 now. So I've done the R2 ones in a separate video and now we're going to talk about R3. There's no difference between R2 and R3 except for the fact that we now have a third variable, AZ and BZ. So the dot product is just AXBX plus AYBY plus AZBZ and the two formulas still hold whether you're using um, vectors with two variables or three. So let's look at one with three here. I have given you vector u with minus three, four, and two, and vector v, two minus one, three. And your job is to determine the dot product and the angle between the vectors. So you remember how to use the dot product. All we do is multiply and add. So we multiply each of the variables. So minus three times two is minus six. I'll write them all out here first. Um, minus 3 times 2 plus 4 times minus 1. <clears throat> My voice is going crazy on me today. Plus 2 times 3. And if you do that, we would have minus 6 plus 6 and minus 4. So I get negative 4. Now, if you recall, if this is negative, if your dot product is negative, that means the angle between the two vectors is going to be obtuse obtuse angle and you'll see that when we um, do the angle calculation. So cos theta here is going to be u dot v which we know is negative and if cos is negative it means you have to be in the second quadrant right. So um, over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v and we have negative 4 and the magnitude, remember to find magnitude, you should be doing that very quickly now. You just square these and add them all together. So I have 9 and 16 is 25 and 4 is 29 and the square root of that. And this one is 4 plus 1 is 5 plus 9 is 14. And if you just plug that into your calculator, cos negative 1 of minus 4 divided by this times this, make sure everything is in brackets on your calculator or you won't get the right answer. So you get approximately 102 degrees. <clears throat> okay, triangle has vertices A, B, C. Find angle B. Okay, I want to find the measure of angle B. So um, if you tried to draw this in three space, which I'm not going to do for you, but you could, and you see that you want to put B, if you want to find angle B, you want B to be the angle that's positioned at the origin. So you want to position these um, vectors so that B is going to be at the origin. So I need to know what BA is and I need to know um, what BC is. So let's just say I had a triangle like this. So I have ABC just to help you visualize. So I want to know BA and I want to know BC and I'm going to find this angle in between it. Okay, so BA, remember we're going to do A minus B. So I have 2 minus 4, 2 minus 4, 3 minus 0, and I have 1 minus minus 2 is 1 plus 2. And that's going to give me minus 2. 3 minus 0 is 3. And I did this one wrong, didn't I? BA1 minus minus 2. No, that's right. I get 3. Mm, maybe because this was supposed to be positive. That's why I'm getting the wrong answer. Okay, back up everybody. Let's make that plus. This is going to be minus 1 minus 2 and this is going to be minus 1. And outside my window there's two little squirrels chasing each other. Okay so uh, let's just write over top of that minus 1. Okay so the magnitude of BA you should have been doing this in pencil all along that's why your teachers tell you to use pencils because then you can erase and not make a mess like that. And so I do that for you to show you what you shouldn't do. Okay, so I have minus 2 squared plus 3 squared 
plus minus one squared. So that's going to give me what here I've got. That's four, nine is 13, and one is 14. So I have the square root of 14 for the magnitude. So let's do B, C, and this time we'll use the right value here being positive. So B, C is C minus B. So three minus four is my first coordinate. Three minus four, six minus zero, and minus four, minus two. And that would give me minus one, six, and minus six. And the magnitude of B, C, you should be really good at doing these now, right? Practice makes perfect. So I have minus one squared, plus six squared, plus minus six squared. So that's 36, 72, and one is 73. Okay, so I've got the vectors. Um, I didn't do the dot product yet, but I can do that very quickly. So I'm going to do cos of B is going to be BA dot BC divided by the magnitude of those two vectors, which I've already calculated for you. And then I'm going to do the bad rule of putting two equal signs on the same line. So I have um, B A dot with B C. So here's my values here. So I have minus two times minus one. That's two. Three times six is eighteen. And mine um, what was that one anyway? Minus one times minus six is plus six over the magnitude of the vectors, which was fourteen and square root seventy-three. And if you do all that, you get approximately 0 0.8133. That's the cos of B. So that means beta is going to be approximately 35.6 degrees. Okay, so you can uh, make sure you know how to find, how to position vectors here, how to find their magnitude. And then it's just simply using the formula to find the angle. <coughs> okay, next question. Given vectors a, 2, 1, and minus 1, and b, 1, 2, minus 3, determine a vector that is orthogonal to both vector a and vector b. Okay, so the first thing, um, you're going to call the vector the normal. This is the normal to the vectors, or it is orthogonal, or it is perpendicular, all meaning the same thing. We're talking about a perpendicular vi vector. <clears throat> Okay, so if vector n is x, y, z, we'll let that represent the orthogonal vector or the one that is perpendicular to the two vectors. Then I know that the dot product of a and my normal has to be equal to zero. And I also know that vector b times this normal vector is zero. And that was one of the things we showed earlier that if the dot product was zero, then the vectors were perpendicular to one another. So looking at a dot n, I would have ax plus y. So I'm doing um, not ax, 2x, sorry. So I have 2x plus y minus z is going to be equal to zero. And this one I'm going to have x plus 2y minus 3z is equal to 0. So now we have a bit of a problem, um, not something we can't overcome here, but this is, we have three unknowns, and um, so we have two linear equations with three unknowns, and so this means there could be an infinite number of solutions to this, and we only need one. Like There's many vectors that could be perpendicular to something in three space, if you think about it right? So we only need one solution. We can choose a value for one of the variables and then solve for the other two. Now this may sound really random and um, again the reason is because there are so many possibilities. So if we just set z equal to 1. Now 
We're also going to find a much easier way to find um, an orthogonal vector in the next lesson called the cross product. So this is one of the ways, I'm not even sure that um, <clears throat> your teacher will expect you to re even remember this because you're going to do the cross product and it's a much easier calculation. But let's follow through with this. So we have 2x plus y is going to be equal to 1 because that would be minus 1 and bring it over. So if z is equal to 1 and then my second equation I would have x plus 2y is going to be equal to 3. <clears throat> okay, so in order for me to um, solve for these two unknowns, I'd have to multiply. Um, I'm going to multiply equation 2 or equation 1 by 2 just so I don't have to move it around. 1 by 2 is going to give me equation 3. So this times 2 is going to give me 4x plus 2y is equal to 2. <clears throat> and because these have the same sign, I'm going to subtract. So x minus 4x is minus 3x. And um, 3 minus 2 is going to be 1. So x is equal to minus 1 third. Now we're going to solve for y. And that would be easy because we just have to plug in minus one third in for x and I have minus two thirds I'm going to add two thirds on this side so I'm adding two thirds to three thirds that's going to give me five thirds so that means a vector orthogonal to both of these vectors would be minus one third five thirds and one or even better we take a scalar multiple of this by and getting rid of these denominators. So I could say minus 1, 5, and 3. Now you could go on to check that by doing the dot product of these two. So I would have um, vector A was, where's my square bracket again, 2, 1, minus 1. And I'm going to dot that with my minus 1, 5, 3. And if this was orthogonal, I'm going to get 0. So look, I have minus, minus 2 plus 5. That's 3. Minus 3 is 0. So I'm proving that my, um, my calculation was correct. And here's vector B dotted with the same vector. And that has to be equal to 0. So I have minus 1. And then I have 10. That's 9 minus 9 is 0. So that just goes to show you that they do work. Hooray, we did the right thing. Okay, the last thing I want to do is question 17, which is um, one of your homework questions that you may have been given. A little bit tricky, and it says that these vectors, you're, it's always the ones that have to have you know, solve for a variable, right? Minus 4p minus 2 and minus 2, 3, 6 are such that cos negative 1, theta is equal to 4 over 21 of cos negative 1, where theta is the angle between x, vector x and vector y, determine the values uh, of p. So if they give you a little hint here, there's going to be more than one solution. Okay, so I have these two vectors and I have cos negative 1 for 21. 4 over 21. So if I wrote this out for you, which you should be familiar with, it's just the dot product formula. So I'm going to say at the absolute value x, absolute value y, cos theta. So the magnitude of x here, the magnitude of x is going to be um, 16. So I have, um, oh, that sounded like a, a birdie. So I have, well, I'll write it all out. I was just going to evaluate it, but let's do it the proper way. So I have minus 4 squared plus p squared plus minus 2 squared. And the magnitude of y is going to be minus 2. Make sure you put it in brackets where it's not real. 3 squared plus 6 squared. 
times the cos of theta, which is 4 over 21. They gave us that here. Okay, so this is 16 plus 4. That's the square root of 20 plus p squared. And this is going to be 4, and 9 is 13, and 36 is 49. So times the square root of 49, all times 4 over 21. Now this is nice because the square root of 49 is just 7, and 7 will divide into 21 three times. So this just gives me 4 over 3. Okay, so 4 over 3 times the square root of 20 plus p squared. Okay, so you might think, oh, that's a bit of a dead end, but we also know what the dot product is of x and y here. So if I do the dot product, I would have, so I'm just going to evaluate this side, right? What's x dot y? Let's put that here. So that's going to be 8. So I'm doing minus 4 times minus 2 plus 3p minus 12. So this has to be equal to this. So now I've set them equal to each other. So I have 8 plus 3p minus 12 is going to be equal to 4 thirds square root of 20 plus p squared. Okay, so I want to isolate the radical so I can square both sides. So that means I'm going to multiply this side by 3 over 4. So 8 minus 12 is minus 4 plus 3p in brackets times 3 over 4. So I'm multiplying by 3 over 4 on both sides to give me this. And if I expand this here, I would have... Um, 9 over 4p, let's put the, first, the p first, always looks better, 9 quarters p and minus 4 times 3 quarters is minus 3 equals this. Okay, so now I want to get rid of the radical, so I'm going to square both sides. And that's going to get rid of the radical sign on this side, and on this side, to square this, I have to like square, so we're doing this, right? So 9 quarters squared is 81 over 16 p squared. So it's squared twice the product, that's minus 27 over 4, twice is minus 54 over 4 p plus 9 equals, equals this, right? Let's just move that one down. 20 plus p squared. Okay, so now the rest of it is just, you know, mathematical algebra rearranging things. And I'm trying to get my pencil to work and it doesn't want to. Let's jump to this one. Okay, so if I want to get rid of this denominator, which would probably be a good thing, I'm going to multiply everything by 16. That gives me, oh, pencils, 81p squared. And this is going to be um, 4, because 16 divided by 4 is 4 times 54 is 216. And this times 16 is 144. That's an easy one. And 20 times 16, also easy, 320. And 16 times 1p is 16p squared. And if you bring this to the other side and simplify, you'd have 65p squared. This is a long question, isn't it? Minus 216p minus 176 is going to be equal to 0. And now, my dear students, you're going to need to use quadratic formula. That's why there's values. So I'm going to leave that to you to do, quadratic formula. And you know that well. x equals negative b plus my square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And you're going to get two answers for p. p is equal to, um, I 
hope that's a 9 that I wrote there. 9 and minus 44 over 65. Okay, so if that's not a 9, it's a 4, but I'm pretty sure it's a 9. So you would have to do all this work. Um, it's, it's a little time consuming, but it's a good question and one you should understand. All we did was use the two different sides of the dot product formula, set them equal to each other, and solve for P. Okay, so hope that helped you out. Um, give me some likes, give me some subscribers, be my friends. Love you all, and good luck, and thanks for watching.